All right, so today let's make some prismatic chocolate. This chocolate has a prismatic surface which diffracts light and makes it iridescent. Crazily enough, I didn't actually add anything to the chocolate to make this happen. Instead, I was able to get this effect by imprinting a tiny grid-like structure onto the surface of the chocolate, and this pattern diffracts light, which makes this optical pattern. What you're looking at here is actually just pure chocolate. But now to be able to get this effect, I needed to temper the chocolate, or basically crystallize the cocoa butter within the chocolate. So today I'm gonna to talk about a couple different ways of actually doing that. Something you all have been asking about for a, quite a while now. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing we're gonna need actually is some chocolate. So the chocolate that you use is really up to you. However, there's one thing you really do wanna avoid, which is chocolates labeled as melting chocolates. These chocolates have palm oil in them, which helps them melt, but they really won't set properly like what we're looking for. Now it seems like an easy enough thing to avoid, but I actually made this mistake in order some of these by accident. I'll include some links also to some really great chocolate down in the description down below. Or alternatively, you could make it yourself. I do have some videos on that. All right, the next thing we're gonna need is a diffraction grating. Now essentially, this is a sheet of plastic with a bunch of tiny grooves etched into it. These grooves are so finely spaced that it causes white light to interfere with itself and actually spread the light apart based on its color. Not too unlike what happens when light passes through a prism. Although I do have to say the mechanism is slightly different for how they work. As you look at the chocolate at different angles, different colors will reach your eye, which is why we get this really cool rainbow effect. Light is reaching your eyes from slightly different parts of the chocolate, which are reflecting off the surface of the chocolate at slightly different angles, and therefore you get different colors. Now, we want to imprint this pattern of the diffraction grating onto the surface of the chocolate bar. Now, to find a sheet like this, I was able to get this one from online. A link to where to find that will be down in the description down below. All right, one last thing we're gonna need is something to actually shape our chocolate, which is why I'm going with these silicon molds that look like this. Now, one of the most important things is actually that the bottom is flat, so that when we pour our chocolate in, it has something flat to rest against. And that will help us make sure that we have a nice even layer of chocolate on our diffraction grating. Okay, so to start with the chocolate bar, the first thing we need to do is actually just cut a strip of this diffraction grating. And we're gonna line the bottom of our silicon mold with our diffraction grating. So to do this, I just roughly measured, and then I just did a little few fine adjustments to make sure that it fits in the bottom of the mold. And then just wanna place the grating side up. But you might be asking, how do you know which side's the grating side? It was actually a really easy way to find out. And what you want to do is lightly rake your fingernail across one of the sides of the diffraction grating. What you should see on one side, it should go relatively smooth. And then on the other side, it will make a very ever so slight squeaking noise. And it should feel a little bit textured. And that's the side that we actually want to use. That's the diffraction grating side. So I just continue to line the silicon mold with all of the diffraction gratings. So for me, I lined about four out of the eight. You know, I just wanted to mess around with this. I didn't want to make too many chocolate bars. Now, speaking of which, it's actually time to get started with the chocolate. So for this first round, I'm going to be using some milk chocolate because, you know, it's pretty good. Now, to actually make this chocolate bar, it really isn't simply a matter of just melting the chocolate, pouring it into the mold and then letting it cool. If we try that, the chocolate won't keep its shape and we're not going to have a really great day. So to make the prism bar, what we need to do is something called tempering the chocolate, which essentially means doing some crystal magic. The cocoa butter in chocolate can solidify or crystallize into one of five different crystal shapes. Now each crystal shape melts at a slightly different temperature. So if you completely melt the chocolate and then cool it down, it will randomly form all five different crystal types. Now these crystal types don't get along very well with each other and they can't interlock. So what this means is you'll end up with a mushy mess of chocolate that really can't hold its shape. And this essentially is what untempered chocolate is. Untempered chocolate is, you know, it's mushy. And when you try to break off a piece, it just kind of, I don't know, like smooshes. It melts easily just by touching it and it has really a dull appearance. Tempered chocolate, however, that's what you get from the store. It has that nice snap when you try to break off a piece. It doesn't melt very easily in your hand and it has a nice shine. And this happens when the crystals of cocoa fat are all the same type. And now this crystal type that we're actually going for is the one with the highest melting point. So now you might be asking, hey, Logan, I'm not a wizard. How do I get chocolate to form different types of crystals? So essentially what we need to do to actually temper the chocolate is heat up the chocolate until it melts and then rapidly cool it down, which will create a bunch of different crystal types. Then heat the chocolate ever so slightly back up and this will melt the crystals with the lowest melting point, leaving us with the best crystals for making this structure, which are also known as beta crystals. By having chocolate of all one crystal type, it will form a super strong structure that's nice and shiny and that will help with the diffraction grading effect. 
Also, the strong structure really helps it keep its shape, which will mean that when we pull the diffraction grating off the chocolate, the pattern will remain in the chocolate. All right, so now let's go back to actually cooking. So I measured out 150 grams of milk chocolate. Now I'm using these little chocolate chips that will melt easily, um, but if you want to use a chocolate bar, just make sure to chop it up beforehand. So in order to melt the chocolate, I'm doing this in a bon marie. Essentially, this is a bowl over some hot water and heating the water will create steam and this will gently melt the chocolate. Chocolate is super, super sensitive to overheating, so you really want to make sure that you have this double boiler or bon marie, bon marie, sorry, I'm really bad at French, as it's called to really help ensure the chocolate doesn't get burned. Okay, the one last thing we need to prepare is a marble slab and some spatulas. And it's not a bad idea to have a thermometer nearby as well. Now these things are gonna be used for the tempering and really help us with our process. Now the marble slab will help cool the chocolate down and form those crystals I spoke about earlier. Now the main thing that we wanna do with this slab is really make sure that it's clean. So I'm gonna go back over it with a paper towel and just make sure there's not any dust or anything like that chilling on the slab. All right, now it's time to return to the chocolate. Gently place the chocolate over the pot and now, you know, it's just a matter of letting the steam kind of heat up and melt that chocolate. Gently mix the chocolate and this will help ensure that there aren't any hot spots. Now, if you have a thermometer, it's not a bad idea to keep an eye on the temperature. Milk chocolate really starts to burn at around 54 degrees Celsius or about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the one last thing is to be very, very, very careful not to get any water into the chocolate or water will kind of grab the cocoa and form a crystal that we don't want or just a few drops can really seize an entire pot of chocolate. Now, once the chocolate's been completely melted and it's reached a temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius, if you're using milk chocolate, we can pull the chocolate off the heat and pour about two thirds of this chocolate onto the marble slab. Place the other third off to the side, but not on the heat. Now begin to use the spatulas to spread out and cool the chocolate down. The idea here is that by stirring the chocolate, we're rapidly cooling, and this should form those crystals of chocolate I spoke about earlier. Now eventually the chocolate should become thicker and sludgier as you do this. And this is a good sign that we're actually in, heading in the right direction. Now once the chocolate's cooled down, you can mix the cooled chocolate with the one third of chocolate, which still should be kind of warm. Gently mix the two and measure the temperature. It's warming the chocolate up. The chocolate itself should be around 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or about 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. Now this higher temperature should destroy those lower temperature crystal types I spoke about earlier and really only leave that higher temperature stable beta crystal that we want, leaving us that nice tempered chocolate. Well, this is kind of the idea at least. Now at this point, pour the chocolate in the mold and Bob's your uncle, we should be done. Give the mold the old tapa tapa and it, this should release any trapped air bubbles in the chocolate. I let mine cool off for you know a few hours on the table somewhere and I came back to this. Pulling the chocolate out of the mold, yeah, it's, it's clearly not tempered. See how it's kind of dull and lackluster? Well, this isn't 100% untempered chocolate, but I clearly messed this up somewhere. So it's, uh, yeah. So after a few minutes of contemplating my failure plate, it's time to try again. So once again, I tried this the second time by going through this whole process, measuring out the chocolate, preparing the gratings for the mold, making sure not to leave any air gaps, heating the chocolate up, pouring two thirds of the chocolate onto the table, doing all the fun scoopy scoopies, gently mixing the table chocolate with the remaining one third of the melted chocolate, pouring this into molds, doing the tapa tapa, and then letting it cool. Okay, after a few hours of cooling, I'm very excited to see how the second round turned out. And looking at the results from round two, it's well, it's not entirely terrible. There's definitely a little bit of transfer of the diffraction grating onto the chocolate, but it's kind of ununiform and it almost looks like, I don't know, Damascus steel or something. Anyways, I tried this process a few more times off camera and I had some pretty inconsistent results. Now, I'm gonna say that this method looks super cool and super professional. And after reading what professional chocolatiers have to say, apparently it's the most difficult and least consistent method for doing this. You really have to know what you're doing and everything has to be dialed in. And I'm sure a professional chocolatier could do this consistently, but I'm not that. And I'm guessing you may not be either, unless you're a masochist chocolatier who loves to torture themselves by watching amateurs butcher your fine art. All right, so for that reason, I'm gonna go down a simpler, little more consistent method for making tempered chocolate. And that has always worked well for me and gave me some pretty awesome chocolate in the end which is the process known as seeding. Now seeding is essentially the process of melting chocolate by adding a little bit of tempered chocolate and introducing the right crystal type. Now by seeding the chocolate, when crystallization starts, it will just attach to the seed crystals and it will just continue to grow out the structure and form basically tempered chocolate directly. So that's what we're gonna do. 
Now, let's start by actually just setting up our diffraction gratings in the molds, just like we did before. But this time, I decided to change to a different type of chocolate, so I'm gonna use dark chocolate this time. It should be a little bit easier to work with than milk chocolate, and I, I, I kinda like dark chocolate. Now, this time, I decided to use chocolate bars, since I know this stuff is tempered properly, and then it's just a matter of chopping this bad boy up into fine pieces. Now, in retrospect, I think you need to chop it even finer than I have here, but it didn't turn out to be the end of the world. Now once everything's nice and chopped, separate about one fourth of the chocolate bar off to the side. Begin heating up the other three quarters of the chocolate and just keep heating it in our bon marie like before until it reaches the melting point. And that melting point is actually slightly different depending on what type of chocolate you're using, whether you're using white, dark, milk, or ruby chocolate. And for that reason, I'm actually gonna put a table with the temperatures up here and in the description down below. And so the temperatures you may need for all of these steps will be slightly different, as I said, depending on the type of chocolate you're using. Okay, so once the chocolate's completely melted, we're gonna wanna separate one third of the chocolate off to the side, and we're just gonna forget about this for right now. Now with the remaining two thirds of the chocolate, take that unmelted chopped chocolate from earlier and mix it into that hot two thirds. And you're gonna keep mixing that until the unmelted chocolate becomes melted chocolate. Then what we're gonna do is add it back in that one third that we had separated off to the side. Gently mix it up and pour it into the molds and just let it completely cool down. And boom, baby. I looked at mine a few hours later and voila. It's so pretty, it finally worked. Now I was feeling a kind of high from this whole experience and thought it was time to aim for the moon. So I decided to press my luck and try this again, but this time using ruby chocolate. Now I had never heard of ruby chocolate until a couple of you in the audience had recommended that I make it someday. It's pretty tasty and I wanna make a prismatic version of it. So just again, let's go through this whole process with ruby chocolate. Separate out one fourth of the chocolate, melt the rest of the chocolate, splitting into thirds. Take your two thirds of the melted chocolate and mix that with the unmelted chocolate and then add back in the one third that we had separated from before. Gently mix it up pour it into molds, let it cool completely, and boom baby, we got ourselves some prismatic ruby chocolate. And if we pull off the diffraction grating, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. So there are other methods for tempering chocolate, some involving a microwave. We all know, unfortunately, that I don't have one of those and I will be getting one someday. I'm not averse to getting one, I'm just lazy and also I don't really have a lot of room for one. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It took me a lot longer to actually get this video out than I was hoping. If you do feel like supporting me, please check out some of my other videos. I mean, some of those videos I've posted during the winter didn't get a lot of love. Uh, additionally, if you wanna go further, you can always get a Flavor Lab mug for your coffee in the morning. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I've got a lot of really fun stuff planned for the future uh, involving some stuff with coffee. All right, well, I'll see you guys hopefully sometime soon. All right, bye.